Hey, it's Mike with Aegis Defense Solutions. Welcome back to the Modern Sportsman here in Burnsville, Minnesota. Uh, shout out to them. They are so gracious tonight to give us the facility again, the store and the range, so we can actually do a little bit of shooting this evening and we can review quite the package from SIG. And here we are in front of the SIG display. In fact, check out the SIG Spear LT. Now, before we go into it any deeper, go ahead and like and subscribe down below. Check us out on social media, Instagram and Facebook, and follow us and all the things that we're gonna be creating as we continue to drive this business forward. Now. What makes the SIG LT Spear so special? Well, the LT, uh, the, the, the Spear LT is an offshoot of two different uh, systems coming together to create this package. You have on one hand, this is a continuation of the MCX Virtus line, which sees the pedigree of the Virtus, of the Rattler, and of the MPX, where we're taking the ergonomics and controls of an AR and we're joining it with a short stroke gas piston system uh, for gas and removing direct impingement that you would see on, say, a standard AR. Now, SIG has continued to improve the Virtus line over the years. In fact, in 2016, during the production of their uh, the Virtus series, they did have issues uh, internally with the bulk carrier group, and it did lead to some recalls with that. They did get that fixed, and it overall still came out to a fantastic package. Next, we enter the Army's Next Generation Squad Weapon Program. SIG entered into this competition against two other companies, Textron and General Dynamics, to create the next platform that the U.S military would go to phasing out the M4. The concerns with the M4 and the traditional 5.56 that NATO has used for decades now was that as increases and advances in infantry body armor would come along that they were concerned that eventually 5.56 would not be able to crack these armor. Ultimately, in 2022, we saw that SIG won the actual contract with the XM7, formerly the XM5, which was the SIG Spear. Now, the SIG Spear is one heck of a system, chambered in the proprietary .277 Fury. Now, this is a screaming round. Traditionally, uh, 5.56, in the pressures and the SAMI uh, specifications in the uh, chamber were about 60,000 PSI. Well, that 277, uh, the 277 Fury, that is coming in at 80,000 PSI. And with these new specifications, the idea was that from hilltop to hilltop, the spear could actually reach out and crack armor at 300 plus yards. So now that the spear has come out and the army has officially adopted it, SIG then created a civilian version where we do have the .277 Fury without select fire, of course, for the civilian market. And you're looking at about a $4,300 price tag on that. So it's not out of reach of civilians. It's just, you gotta drop the, the ducats on that thing if you want that platform. Well, they also then took the advances that they made with the SIG Spear, and they married those to uh, the Virtus line to continue with this amazing MCX line. So now we have the MCX Spear LT. This baby, this package right here. Now this one's chambered in 5.56, and we're also gonna fire tonight the one chambered in 7.62 by 39. Really the big difference of those is you're getting a bigger uh, uh, caliber, of course, in that, a little bit different bolt, but ultimately the, the biggest change is also gonna be the magazines, where we have the aggressively curved magazines that go with the 7.62 by 39. Now, what do I like about this thing? It has quite a uh, few features in this and really makes it armor friendly. And that's probably the biggest thing with this and some of the advances with the next generation squad weapon program that the US military wanted to do. They wanted to make this easy for armorers, okay? Because first off, with the spear, the XM7, those high pressures, that's gonna cause a lot of wear and tear on the barrel and the breech on these firearms and in a bulk carrier, the whole system. It's gonna break them down quicker. 80,000 PSI, 20,000 PSI higher than traditional 5.56. So one of the first things that they did was that they made a simple uh, handguard system, easily removable with Allen set screws, uh, that we can just simply take off, slide off the actual handguard without having to fiddle too much with any, uh, uh, with any uh, uh, castle nuts. Now, on the inside of that, we also have two more set screws and a clamping system on the inside that allows us to actually swap out the barrels. And by swapping out the barrels, we can actually change the caliber on this thing. We'll have to obviously change the bulk carrier group, but the lower receiver still stays the same, the trigger group still stays the same. We're honestly just swapping out the barrel and that bolt carrier group on the inside, which gives you a very modular platform as well. But wait, there's more. So, since we're sitting on the barrel, let's talk about a couple other things that we have with the SIG Spear. Additionally, we do have an adjustable gas block at the top here, and the handguard is actually designed in such a way 
that we can gain easy access to this, either by hand, or if it gets too gummed up, we can actually use a tool or even uh, possibly even the, uh, the tip of a round to actually crank that over. And this is a system designed to be shot suppressed. It is part of the design feature of this, to make problems small and quiet. We do have a proprietary three-prong flash hider on the top of that, threaded four SIGs uh, suppressor that's specific to the spear. Go ahead and actually test the trigger on this. And I'll be honest with you, I think the trigger is actually pretty decent. Uh, it's definitely better than a mil-spec trigger. Is it a Geisley or a, CMM, uh, a CMC or a Timney? Probably not, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have its place and that out of the box, it is significantly better than say a traditional mil-spec trigger for an AR-15. So when we pull back on that, we can see here, we have about two millimeters of take up, not very far, a very crisp wall, and there's the brake. Charge that handle, let's go ahead and reset. It has a little bit of a longer reset, much more akin to a mil spec reset, about four millimeters on that reset. There's the brake, and forward with the reset, and there's our wall. Pretty good trigger overall, and honestly, out on the range, it feels even better. Now, what are we looking at on the price tag on a system like this? Between any of them, you're still looking at about $2,500 for the price tag on a Sig Spear LT, which is still pretty expensive, definitely much more than, say, even a Daniel Defense, uh, but you're still hitting in the ballpark of, say, a Radian or even an H&K or a Lewis machining tool. So out of the price range for just uh, uh, your any day regular shooter, no, but it is a bit of a prettier penny if you wanna go the direction of having an AR style ergonomics with a short gas stroke piston operated system. But ultimately, talk is cheap. Let's actually get these things out to the range and actually throw some lead, okay? We got the 7.62 uh, right here. We got the 7.62 by 39 and we have our 5.56. Let's actually sling some lead. All right, here we are on the range with the Sig Spear LT. We are going to be rocking six proprietary Tango MSR one to eight times low power variable optic. It's actually a pretty decent optic. Uh, I really enjoy, uh, it's got the built-in throw lever, which I really like. And I love my Vortexes normally. Uh, but one thing I don't like is that uh, particularly the Razor, uh, and the uh, Viper PST Gen 2 don't have a throw lever, which I always thought was really weird that their lower end with the Strike Eagle always actually had a throw lever. But Vortex, great optics. SIG has been really getting better with their optics and improving those packages. Uh, so uh, do I think they're worth it as far as their price? They're probably hit that point where I think SIG optics are, are probably a good way to actually go and, and invest in if you really like SIG's products. So. What else do we have this? Well, we do have a folding stock here so we can collapse that down. And because the lack of the buffer tube with it being a, a short stroke gas operated system and not direct impingement is that we don't need a buffer tube back there. So we are not limited in that regards to that. We also have QD latches, no QD latch in the front, which I thought was a little odd, but of course we can always add a QD latch to this on any of the M lock on this or even using the Picatinny rail across the top. So we just have several targets set up and let's see what we can do with this thing and just have a little fun, throw some rounds down range. And I'll kind of tell you my thoughts about how it actually runs and what I think about that in the end. Is it worth the price tag? Is it worth it for you? pull feels pretty good overall. Yeah, it's fairly fun to fire. Uh, the recoil impulse, not much different than a standard AR. Uh, felt pretty good overall. So let's actually do a few more rounds. So, so far, what do I think? Honestly, the trigger actually feels pretty good. It's pretty responsive. Uh, I like it. The ergonomics are pretty simple. Uh, hitting the opposite end paddle release for uh, pr conducting a reload and dropping the bolt forward 
work pretty well. Uh, the lever is pretty ergonomic. Uh, the safety selector switch is, I, I enjoy, I've really grown onto having just that ambidextrous safety. I can't have a rifle without it now. Just for the fact that how I operate that platform traditionally where I'm, whenever I'm coming up, I like to thumb that and I like to knife hand that as I'm coming back in, going into a safe position. So it's just, it's definitely, uh, you know, coming with the modern age with, as ARs continue to advance, it's a really good ergonomic way to actually build that lower receiver. Really, really enjoy that. The optic's pretty good. Uh, you know what, the, the glass is crisp, uh, crisp and clear. The reticle is easy to see and placing rounds down range right now. Uh, you know, I, I've got a couple that definitely didn't hit A-zone. Got a little sloppy there, got a little excited. Uh, it's definitely an exciting f uh, firearm to shoot. I think I'm enjoying this life. Is it worth $2,500? Ultimately, that's really gonna be up to you. It does a lot of fantastic things. And like I said, from the military and law enforcement standpoint, it's really offering easy solutions for an armorer uh, to help with any agency, uh, which is, of course, that, 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 that's a good thing and makes their job a little bit easier with the ability to swap out barrels, the ability to swap out the internals and change things on this platform, okay? For the civilian standpoint, hey, man, if you want it, you wanna drop the money, go for it. This is a cool system. You want a short stroke gas operated system that is not an HK416, uh, you know, H&K being what it is, I think you're paying a pretty penny for a whole lot. They're good platforms, but man, you know, they're, they're pricey. Heck, I, I mean, for me, I'm a baller on a budget. I'm not necessarily going to go drop out this kind of money just yet. And uh, who knows, maybe probably I will eventually, but this is overall a great platform. The grip angle on the actual uh, pistol grip itself is fairly ergonomic. It's comfortable to use. Uh, I am enjoying that. Uh, it is, it, you know, it, it's easy enough to, to get that angle, bring it up and transition with that from any position. Very, very comfortable to hold and to fire. SIG has made a good platform. I, I do recommend this. This is a, this is a joy to fire. This is super fun to shoot. And as you saw, we'll have, uh, with the, with the shots we did with the 762 by 39, uh, not much different. I don't care for the 762 by 39 magazines. I think those aggressive curved magazines they're kind of annoying to, to mess around with especially you're pulling them out of your belt pulling them out of, a, uh, out of a, a mag pouch on your plate carrier reloads are a little goofy with them uh the aluminums i was using a little slick if you're not wearing gloves you know i, I didn't care for it that much that's just me though i'd probably put a little bit of a, a grip tape around it uh help get a good purchase on them if i'm using those aluminums uh but past that though honestly the 762 it wasn't you know, wasn't much different as far as recoil impulse on that. Maybe, maybe just a little bit uh, rougher, but the, the, the flash hider uh, does a pretty good job at least of uh, taming that, some of that muzzle rise. It's the, the recoil impulse is, is pretty simple and not much different than a regular AR, you know, maybe a little more aggressive. I mean, but the whole point of a short stroke gas operated system though, too, is to make full automatic, uh, much more controllable than say that uh, direct impingement, but uh, really, really cool package. I really, really enjoy this and, and do recommend it. But you know what, in the end, these firearms are not as worth as much as the person behind it operating it. So you know what, continue to go get training, continue to educate yourself and be a better shooter. Get some time on the range, go with your friends, take your girlfriend, your wife or wherever, and go have a good time with it because the amount of time that you're spending down range is not time ill spent. It's training and it's making you a more accurate and a safer shooter overall. So this has been Mike with Aegis Defense Solutions. If you like the stuff that we're doing, hey, like and subscribe down below. Check us out on our website, www.aegisdefensesolutions.com. That's A-E-G-I-S. I'll have the QR code for you right up here. And we're doing lots of good stuff with some travel recently as we're continuing to develop and create customized evacuation plans covering fire, weather, explosive and IED awareness, and actually conducting active shooter uh, training and active shooter live training for churches, nonprofits, and businesses and organizations uh, uh, in the states and for Minnesota and surrounding it. Hey, we're now we're traveling a little bit more. We're more than willing to come out and check out your, what your organization needs and what we can do for you. So, hey, check us out. We would love to be there for you. And remember, stay prepared, not scared, guys. God bless and good night.